Hi, this is Simon Upstall and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today we're going to be taking a look at this supernova particle effect. Okay, so this isn't really meant to be a tremendously realistic scene, but it is a very interesting technique, I think, for creating loads and loads of particles without having to make loads and loads of particles. What does that mean? Well, let's take a look. Okay, so let's come over and look at the whole project settings. So I'm going with a frame rate of 25 frames a second, a duration of 15 seconds. And eventually I'm going to be using 1920, 1080. But to start off with, I want to set the width and height to 400 and then I want to come to object and generators and I want to look for membrane and what I'm going to do here is simply export a still of this just at the first frame so I'm going to come to share save current frame we want to choose PNG for the export type let's call it supernova asset and let's save it off to our assets folder like that and overwrite the one I've already made there OK, so the next thing we want to do is we want to come to import and bring in that asset. Now, it'd be really nice, wouldn't it, if Apple gave us the opportunity to export and automatically import, but they don't. Never mind. Let's click on import and we can delete our original membrane. So as I say, we're going to come over to the project properties and we're going to set the width and height back to 1920 by 1080. Let's grab our supernova asset. Let's come to filters. Let's come to stylize and crystallize and let's grab color and levels. Let's open up the histogram. Let's open up the opacity like this. Let's set the black in value to 0.4 and the white in value to 0.5. And if we actually look at what that's done with the alpha here, it's brought those two very close together like that. And the result is that we've kind of got these little specks and that's great. So the only other thing we need to do is we need to zero out the speed of the crystallized like so. So then this supernova asset is going to be the particle cell for our particle system. So we're going to come to object and make particles. So let's set all of this up. We're going to switch to 3D, which is very important. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set the birth rate to 320 and the birth rate randomness to 320. And making sure I'm at the first frame, I'm going to keyframe them like that. And I'm going to come to the last frame and set both of those down to zero. And let's come back to the beginning. OK, so let's have a life of 17, life randomness of 5, speed of 150, speed randomness of 100, angle randomness of, I don't know, 128, spin randomness of 512. What else can we do? Oh, let's come to the scale, set that to 50%, scale randomness to 50%. And let's turn on additive blend. The other thing I want to do is open up the gradient opacity of life. Let's click here to make a tag. Let's set that location to be 10%. Let's click on the first tag and set the opacity to zero. And then let's come to the color mode and let's choose over life. Let's set this end one here to be a very dark red. Let's make this first one white, I think. And let's click sort of around about here. Let's set that to say 20%. And let's make this one nice deep yellow like that. OK, so then we've got this. And to get our effect, what we want to do is we want to come over to properties. We want to open up the anchor point. We want to select the X. We want to add parameter behavior and ramp. Let's have a start value of something like 48 and an end value of, I don't know, 2400. And then I want to come to properties and the Z rotation. And I want to add a ramp to that as well. So add ramp. Let's set the end value of this to 2400. So the result of that is this. We're getting this swirling effect like that. It's going to be a lot better, however, when we select the emitter. We come to behaviors, particles, and scale of a life. We want to choose custom for the increment type. We want to open up this graph here. We want to option click in the middle. We actually want to set that custom scale to 
Uh, we can even set that over life to 50% if we wanted. Let's drag around that end keyframe there and set that custom scale back down to zero. And let's drag around the middle there, right click and click select ease both. So that's going to be better because we're going to, the particles are going to grow and then shrink. So let's just to this group add filters and glow and neon. Let's set the outer glow to 500 and let's set the inner glow to 100 and set the mix value down to 50%. So that's really going to help a lot with the brightness of it all like that. We're getting this nice glow. So I realize I've forgotten a key element here with this emitter, and that's to come to the properties and the Y rotation. And I want to add parameter behavior and wriggle. I want to have an amount of say 90, set the apply mode to add and subtract, set the frequency to two and the noisiness down to zero. And this is going to swirl it around and it's going to look a lot better. So let's have a look at that. We're getting this sort of swirling in depth. And that I think is going to be nice. OK, so then I'm going to take this emitter and I'm going to duplicate it. Let's come back to that wriggle and just click on that random seed a few times to make sure that's different. Let's come over here, scroll down to the bottom and click on this random seed a few times to make sure that's different as well. Let's reduce the life down to 15 for this. Let's come to this color over life and let's maybe set this to be something like that instead. And let's also come over to the behaviors. And what we want to do is rotate it the opposite direction. So actually I rotate it a bit more as well. So let's go for negative 3200 for the Z rotation. And let's have a look. So there you go, lots and lots of, of apparent particles, but we're actually not generating very many at all. So what else can we do? Close up that group. Let's come to the library and generators. Let's grab the lens flare, drag that in there. Let's also drag in a color solid behind everything else. Let's set this color solid to be very, very dark blue like that. Let's come back to our lens flare. Let's come to one second on the timeline. Let's keyframe the intensity and set that up to four, the maximum it will go. Let's come to the first frame, set that intensity to zero. Let's come to five seconds on the timeline and again, set the intensity down to zero. Let's also set the fall off to something like 0.5 because that's going to give us a really nice intense spread. So the other thing I want to do is come to properties and I want to come to the scale, X scale, set that to 500% like that. So it gives us this elongated streak. And then we get this burst that fades away like that as our particles grow. I think let's also just adjust this lens flare color. So we've got a lot more warmth in there. What else can we do? Oh, is I want to come to this group here with the color solid in it. And I want to come to add object and generators and cellular. And I'm just going to turn off the particles and the lens flare while we look at this. Let's open up the gradient for the cellular, grab this black value and then crunch it down till we're getting just a few particles like that, cellular particles. We can maybe bring the white in as well to make those more intense as we choose. And maybe let's make this white a bit yellow like that. So we could also possibly just add a neon to this as well. Let's try that and let's set the mix value down to something quite low, like 20%. Okay, so that is going to help us have this sort of star field effect. And those are also animated, which is quite nice. So anyway, I hope you have fun playing around with this idea and thanks for watching. See you soon.